Hello friends, today is the fourth session in the chapter alcohols, phenols and ethers. Today we shall study about phenols. In our last session, we have studied about alcohols, their nomenclature, their methods of preparation, classification, physical properties and chemical properties. Today we shall begin with phenols. Phenols are organic compounds. They are organic compounds which are also known as carbolic acid, especially phenol alone is known as carbolic acid. Phenols are the organic compounds in which hydroxyl group is directly attached to hydroxyl group is directly attached to an aromatic ring or a benzene ring. So, they are called as aromatic derivatives of they are called as hydroxy derivatives of aromatic hydrocarbons. In other words, phenols are the organic compounds which are obtained by replacing one hydrogen atom of benzene or an aromatic compound by one hydroxyl group. So, phenols are hydroxy derivatives of aromatic hydrocarbons. Commonly phenol is also known as carbolic acid. It is also known as carbolic acid. <coughs> now, these phenols <coughs> are classified into three types. Phenols are classified into three types. The first type is monohydric phenols. Monohydric phenols are those which contain only one hydroxyl group in them. Like example, this compound, phenol itself or else cresols. So, monohydric phenols are those which contain only one hydroxyl group attached to the benzene ring. Whereas, the second type is dihydric phenols. Dihydric phenols are those, dihydric phenols are those which contain two hydroxyl groups attached to the aromatic system. Example, this compound 1 comma 2 dihydroxybenzene or benzene diols. Then we have third type trihydric phenols. Trihydric phenols are those which contain three hydroxyl groups attached to benzene ring. The three hydroxyl groups could be attached to any of the carbon, but make sure that two hydroxyl groups are never attached to the same carbon. It is because if two hydroxyl groups are attached to same carbon, then they will undergo dehydration and the compound will become a ketone and the compound will become a ketone. For this reason, Make sure that while you are giving examples for a, <coughs> a compound which contains two hydroxyl groups, do not attach two hydroxyl groups to a single carbon atom. The two hydroxyl groups can be attached to adjacent carbon atoms or carbon atoms with gaps in between, but never two hydroxyl groups should be attached to one carbon atom. So, this was classification. Phenols are classified into how many types? Three types. They are monohydric phenols, dihydric phenols and trihydric phenols. Now, let us study their nomenclature. The nomenclature of phenols is much more simpler than alcohols. The same rules that apply for other organic compounds, they too are applied here. In nomenclature, we have two systems, common naming system and IUPAC system. So, <coughs> let us see first with some typical examples of phenol. Its common name is phenol, its IUPAC name is also phenol or you can say hydroxybenzene. Because phenol is now accepted IUPAC name, therefore the common name as well as the IUPAC name are same phenol. If this is the compound, We know that functional group should be given preference more than the alkyl groups. On that note, if this is the compound, then 
while writing common names it is known as cresol which cresol orthocresol because based on this position the next adjacent position is ortho it is orthocresol but in according to iupac name this much is phenol and this compound is methyl phenol which methyl phenol 2 methyl phenol it is 2 methyl phenol or 2 methyl phenol we have dihydric phenols for dihydric phenols are those which contain two hydroxyl groups in them this compound is commonly known as catechol it is common name catechol whereas iupac name there are different ways in which you can name this compound like 1 comma 2 dihydroxy benzene dihydroxy benzene or else benzene 1 comma 2 diol this would be more appropriate iupac name than 1 comma 2 dihydroxy benzene benzene 1 to diol is correct iupac name of this compound catechol catechol is otherwise also called as ortho dihydroxy benzene commonly it is also called ortho dihydroxy benzene if the same two hydroxyl groups are attached with one gap then its common name is resorcinol its common name is resorcinol and what would be its iupac name benzene 1 comma 3 diol benzene 1 3 diol one more compound if the two hydroxyl groups are attached at opposite positions then this compound is commonly called quinol quinol and iupac name is benzene 1 comma 4 diol in this way dihydric phenols can be named now let us see how trihydric phenols are named common examples are these a trihydric phenol is the one which contains three hydroxyl groups attached to it so its common name is pyrogalol common name is pyrogalol second example but with one gap if this was not present if this oh was not present then this compound was called quinol now it contains hydroxyl group therefore it is called hydroxy quinol it is called hydroxy quinol another compound which contains three hydroxyl groups then it is called fluoro glucinol this should not be confused with f it is fluoroglucinol and not fluoroglucinol now these three are common names often in the exams you can expect one mark question as write the structure of pyrogalol you are supposed to write this structure the names and structures are important from exam point of view what would be its iupac name benzene 1 2 3 triol benzene 1 2 4 triol benzene 1 3 5 triol that's all so nomenclature is very simple now we shall see their methods of preparation how phenols are prepared you have seen how alcohols are prepared there were different methods similarly phenols also have different methods of preparation and all of them are most easiest methods the first method is from haloarenes you have studied this in haloarenes chapter it is commonly called as dows process this process is commonly known as dows process what is done in this method take any haloarene i'll choose chlorobenzene i'll choose chlorobenzene so whenever chlorobenzene is <coughs> heated with sodium hydroxide you can say warmed with sodium hydroxide or heated with sodium hydroxide at a temperature of about 623 kelvin 
and pressure of about 350 atm then what happens replacement occurs NaCl goes here comes OH some books tend to give a lengthier method like if it is reacted with NaOH first you will have ONA and HCl will go further acidification with any acid you will get this can be taken as HCl then you will get OH and then NaCl only to avoid different steps I am giving you a simpler method whenever chlorobenzene is heated with sodium hydroxide at a temperature of about 623 Kelvin and a pressure of 350 atm then you will get phenol as the product this method is called douse process it is called douse process then we have another method in this method we use benzene sulfonic acid we use benzene sulfonic acid you know what benzene sulfonic acid is benzene sulfonic acid is this compound benzene with SO3H this is obtained when you carry out sulfonation on benzene benzene is made to react with sulfuric acid in the presence of oleum then you will get benzene sulfonic acid now this benzene sulfonic acid is again reacted with a base like NaOH and the product you get is phenol the product you get is phenol now instead of this simpler step if you really wish to understand how this happens the lengthier method is if it is reacted with sodium hydroxide the first step will be loss of N A H S O 3 so you will be losing N A H S O 3 what is left oxygen sorry this O H is present N A H S O 3 is gone what is present O H so this O H is attached here you can understand in this way or you can directly write hydro sorry uh, basic hydrolysis or alkaline hydrolysis of benzene sulfonic acid will give you phenol then third method the third method is from diazonium salts you might have a slight idea of what diazonium salts are from Sandmeyer's reaction it was one of the method to prepare haloarenes so now you take benzene diazonium chloride benzene diazonium chloride benzene diazonium chloride then if it is warmed with water if it is warmed with water what happens instead of writing water in this way I will split it as a bent molecule then you need phenol so remove this part HCl is gone then you remove this part nitrogen gas is liberated what is left behind OH simply whenever benzene diazonium salts are dissolved in water and slightly warmed you will get phenol as the product now all these three methods are the most simpler methods you have fourth method is from isopropyl benzene it is from isopropyl benzene isopropyl benzene is also called cumin it is also called cumin therefore this process is also called as cumin process how do you prepare phenol by cumin process it is an important question from in almost all the exams from phenols under methods of preparation this question that is how do you prepare phenol by isopropyl benzene or by cumin is an important question let us see how it is prepared so first take isopropyl benzene isopropyl benzene is this compound three carbons the middle carbon should have benzene ring attached to it now 
if this is oxidized if this is oxidized at a temperature of about 130 degree celsius at a temperature of about 130 degree celsius then you will have then you will have c as it is this methyl group this methyl group attached to methyl groups as they are i'll write bit below c ch3 here ch3 instead of writing this h insert these two oxygens inside so now you have a peroxide linkage here this compound is called cumene hydro peroxide you will end up with cumene hydro peroxide this is our first step in the first step cumene or isopropyl benzene is reacted with oxygen or it is oxidized at a temperature of 130 degree celsius to give you cumene hydro peroxide this cumene hydro peroxide in the next step cumene hydro peroxide in the next step is now hydrolyzed is now hydrolyzed in the presence of an acid especially sulfuric acid at a temperature of about 100 degree celsius now what happens you eliminate this part you eliminate this part attach oh here whenever it is hydrolyzed the bond breaks between the peroxide linkage to give you phenol and the other product ch3 co ch3 ch3 co ch3 acetone and phenol are obtained <coughs> now why this question forms an important part of all exams of all these questions cumene process can be asked for three marks if not at least for two marks write the two steps involved in the preparation of phenol from cumene if this is the question what will you write you need not write the entire words you have to write only these two steps in the first step cumene is oxidized at a temperature of 130 degree celsius to give you cumene hydroperoxide the same cumene hydroperoxide is then hydrolyzed by an acid at a temperature of 100 degree celsius to give you phenol often if the same question does not appear for two or three marks for one mark they can be asking you as name the byproduct obtained during cumene process the byproduct is acetone or propane to own so today how many reactions did we study for methods of preparation there are four methods of preparation the first was dow's process or from haloarenes wherein Chlorobenzene is reacted with a base or heated with a base at a temperature of 623 Kelvin and 350 degree sorry 350 atmospheric pressure to give you phenol the byproduct is sodium chloride. The second is from benzene sulfonic acid alkaline hydrolysis of benzene sulfonic acid gives you phenol. The third method is from diazonium salts benzene diazonium chloride is simply warmed with water will give you phenol name the gas liberated during the preparation of phenol from benzene diazonium chloride it should be nitrogen gas and not hcl gas it should be nitrogen gas the last fourth and most important method is cumene process cumene is actually isopropyl benzene when isopropyl benzene is oxidized cumene hydroperoxide is obtained cumene hydroperoxide is hydrolyzed by an acid to give you phenol with a byproduct acetone this was all for today's part in the next session, we shall see the physical and chemical properties of phenols. That's all for now. Thank you.